Hello, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this evening's training spotlight on uh, engineering and ETO pathways in the merchant navy and the maritime industry. Uh, my name is Sam Saunders. I'm currently the manager of Royal Docks Boat Station down in London, and I'm hosting our guest speakers this evening. We've got Rachel Gurnett, who is from the uh, Merchant Navy Training Board, and she's going to be introducing Lorna Wagner from Maritime UK, Stephen Gallagher, and Chris Powell as her panel this evening. If you have any questions that come up during the session, uh, there will be a Q&A open, so just type your questions in there. And there's going to be about a 30 to 40 minute presentation, and then we'll have some time afterwards uh, where I'll present the questions to the panel. So type away uh, and we'll bring them all together at the end of the session. OK, that's the introductions over. So I'm going to hand over now to Rachel and let her get underway. Hi everyone, thanks for that introduction. I was going to say um, let's go around the table and introduce everybody but that's already done for me so I'll be able to um, let that one go and we'll, as um, the presentation goes you'll meet a couple of people as we go on and hopefully find out a little bit more about who they are. Um, so just bear with me while I share my screen, um, it should be coming up now. There we go. Hopefully everyone's seeing that. Um, so what we've got here is the introduction. So like we said, we've got um, myself, Rachel Gurnett, Stephen Gallagher and Chris Powell, who are both Careers at Sea ambassadors. So they're part of our volunteer team. And uh, Lorna Wagner, who works with um, Maritime Careers um, within Maritime UK. And she's going to speak a little bit more about careers in the wider maritime sector. Um, so we will hear from uh, them as we go along. Um, so um, as said, if you've got any questions, um, please feel free to um, put your questions in if you want. Um, and I think we've got a group chat going on, so hopefully I'll be able to um, put that up there with me while I get that as well, just to make sure that I've got that. Where is it? Chat. There we go. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions or if you can't see anything, then give us a shout and we'll, um, we'll work something out um, from there. So we're going to start by uh, watching a short video. This is um, available on our Careers at Sea website. Um, I think I should be able to um, share sound. Um, so if you can't hear, then let me know. Um, but let's uh, watch this from start with. Forget nine to five. It's 95 percent of all trade that's moved by sea. And I'm a part of it. Me. Fish fingers for tea. Two bees in a sea. From double signs to container giants. Skateboard mission to bridge watch session. Driving mum insane. Lifting a new car with a crane. You can work your way up, they said, and I've never felt closer to the bridge. And it's true, the journey, inspiring. All cylinders firing, night shift tiring, but three months on and three months off. Good travel, they said. Photo of me in the mid. Gaming all day long, waste of time, wrong. Transferable skills that I never imagined. Teasing seagulls with chips, only watching the ships. Now world leading tech at my fingertips. From kid doing school play to knowing that someday I'll captain this ship. It sounds like a script, but it's real. 50,000 tons of steel. And I feel grateful. For the place that persuaded us that a job much more than bright colored containers could be for me. A career at sea, the best decision I made. I'm helping the world now, and I connect it by trade. Start every day with a brew. Not a bad few, but always remembering where I grew. Up on the deck. New day, new adventure. Never the same. So many hats. Laugh with the lads. A FaceTime with dad. Decent paycheck. High tech. To Quebec. Clean deck. To see or not to see. It's a no-brainer. For me. Great, so uh, that video is available on our Careers at Sea website on the home page if you want to have a look at that again or if you want to share that with any of your um, units or with anybody that you uh, think would be interested. So um, that's just a short introduction video too, you're not going to watch it again. Um, so just to introduce, we're going to say um, what is the Merchant Navy? So I'm going to give a brief overline. Some of you might already know, so I don't want to be going into too much detail um, for those. There is a page on our um, website as well uh, that uh, gives a brief overview of what is the Merchant Navy. But essentially we are talking about commercial shipping. So anything that isn't um, a country's Royal Navy, so think of tankers, cruise ships, tugs, dredgers, bulk carriers, containers, ferries, those kind of um, 
uh, vessels um, and what the merchant navy crew are the people who work on board ships so you've got the deck team the navigation team and the engineers and we're going to briefly cover all the different roles but we're going to have a particular focus on engineering and uh, both of our volunteers have got experience working in uh, engineering and ETO roles on board ships so this is the first time when I'm going to ask them to um just give a, a bit of an insight so um if it's okay can i hand over to stephen first just to explain a little bit about um his role working on board ship and as well what you do now stephen just to let us know yeah uh, hi everyone my name is stephen gallagher so um currently i work as a vessel manager on the shore side however uh, i spent 12 years at sea working as an electro technical officer so i, I worked on cruise ships ferries um container vessels and dynamic positioning cable layers so uh, yeah, during my time on board ships, um, different types of ships have different responsibilities, but really the, the electrician and the engineers on board have a variety of tasks every day. Um, we get involved in all parts of the ship. It's a really interesting uh, part on board and it is critical for everything uh, going on. So anything from the galleys to uh, the actual engines and propulsion, you know, it's a really very day-to-day -day job for the ETOs or the uh, engineers. It's a, a fascinating career for anyone interested. Just realised I need to unmute myself, not other people on the team. <laughs> that. Um, uh, great, thanks, Stephen. Um, can I ask Chris now to jump in and give us a bit of an oversight into um, what you do on board ship and what you're doing now, um, just so everybody's aware of your background. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Powell. Um, I'm first engineer at the moment on the passenger ferries. Um, I've been in the Merchant Navy for 13 years. Uh, started out as an engine cadet and worked my way through. Um, it's a very varied career. So at the moment, uh, as I said, I've started it, I'm now a first engineer. Started as a cadet, and that took about three years. Um, once I'd learned my my trade, as it were, um, I gained the officer of the watch certificate, and then went my way up straight through the ranks. Um, started out on a large cruise company, uh, which was fun. Saw a lot of the world, um, learned a lot of the systems, um, and basically just um, learned how to, to maintain a safe and efficient watch. And then moved on from there. Now on the ferries, it's very busy. Um, it's never a, a dull day, so to speak. So um, we just keep the ship moving, keep the passengers moving across. Great, that's great. Thanks, Chris. Um, so um, Chris and Stephen are both um, uh, volunteers who've uh, very kindly offered to give up their time to speak today. Um, and we've also got um, a team of I think what, over 200 volunteers at the moment on our system. And I know that um, maritime careers have also got volunteers on their system. Um, and volunteers like these guys um, can come and speak to your units or speak to any kind of uh, sessions that you've got going on um, about experiences as you go through. So we hear a little bit of an example of that today. But if you're interested in having some uh, more specific experiences from um, ambassadors, then uh, please feel free to get in touch with us because we'd love to be able to offer um, some specific sessions uh, for sea cadets and um, we have got other webinars on the virtual platform that you can look at which are particularly aimed um, at sea cadets so um, if you're interested you can look at those as well but just to be aware that um, these guys are going to set a very fine example of uh, how good it is to have first-hand experience of people who've worked in these roles um, so yeah so that's that so like we said before we've got um uh, on uh, this webinar, we're going to briefly talk about all the roles. So there are some deck and navigation officer roles um, that um, you can take, as well as deck uh, rating roles and onboard services. Um, the Stephen and Chris both talked about passenger vessels and where there's passengers, there's going to be onboard services. So there's some roles um, like that as well. But like I said, we are particularly going to be focusing in on engineering and electrotechnical officer roles uh, today. If you want to hear about the other roles, again, you can go back to the webinars we've done before where we'll cover um, all of those examples. And we've got some more ambassadors on the videos talking about their experience experiences as um, deck uh, teams. Um, so before, while we're talking about um, jobs on board, we're also going to speak about um, shore-based jobs. And this is where I'm going to hand over to Lorna um, just to give us an oversight into um, wider maritime engineering careers in the maritime industries. And then afterwards, we'll focus again on the jo jobs um, on board vessels. So over to you, Lorna. And if you want to just give me a little nudge when you want me to go through the slides, then we'll go from there.
Oh, you want to unmute your microphone, Lorna? There we go. Um, hi, I'm Lorna Wagner. I'm the Programme Manager for Careers and Outreach for Maritime UK. And Maritime UK, if I explain what that organisation is, they're an umbrella organisation for the whole sector. So the Merchant Navy is a very important part of the sector, but there are lots of other industries that are included as well. And there's a list of them there on the screen. I'm not going to read them out line by line for you. The Maritime UK was formed after the 2050 strategy was written by the Department for Transport. And what the Department for Transport was saying was that there was a once in a lifetime opportunity for the sector and it was going to double in size by 2030. And that doesn't mean 100% of all the same jobs again. There's a lot of change going on in the sector. The sector is digitalizing. There are robotics and autonomous crafts are being developed. Um, and a huge amount of work, research, innovation is going into the um, the aim to be carbon net zero by 2050. So whether they're looking at hydrogen based fuel solutions for vessels or they're looking for the way that cruise ships charge up their power when they come into port, um, science based careers are really on the on the rise. 75 percent of the jobs in the maritime sector are actually onshore um, and they include things like marine biology. It includes people that work in ports and harbours and marinas and it includes people that are on work boats and importantly the business services too. So if if um, a child of yours is considering a career in law for example they might want to think about conveyancing law or family law or or business law, or they might want to think about maritime law. And uh, so I'm working with the whole of the sector, trying to make sure that we increase the awareness about the opportunities that are out there and support young people and adult job seekers in finding their career of choice. Can we move on, Rachel, please? So what are the key messages? So uh, um, an average, the national average wage is £29,000 a year. In maritime, it's 38. So it's a well paid career choice. There's lots of different ways to come into the sector, whether it's through a cadetship for a career at sea, whether it's an apprenticeship for a career on shore, whether it's a full time job that leads to an employer supporting and, and funding your training. There's really um, an endless list. There's also a large, a, a, a very regular shift from sea to shore that people will come into the sector and either through the Royal Navy or the Merchant Navy gain their training and their qualifications and then at a point in their life where their life circumstances are changing they don't want to be at sea anymore there's a, a fair proportion of them will then want to transfer onto shore based jobs where the, the working hours and so on are, are a bit more perhaps predictable it's the best way of putting that. Can we have the next slide please? So the Green Revolution, the government listed Maritime as part of their 10 point plan to the Green Industrial Revolution that was published just before Christmas. So that's not just to do with hydrogen and carbon um, zero emission uh, vessels, although I saw something on the Internet the other day about a cargo ship that basically had solar powered um, sails, which was extraordinary. But we're also talking about um, the services around that. So ecology is really uh, high profile at the moment. I know of a little company in, in the Solent where they, they trim the green sticky um, biological waste that it attaches itself to hulls of, of ships as it's sailing around the world and then has a negative impact on the fuel efficiency. And there's a little company in the Solent where they have created robots, which are half lawnmower, half vacuum cleaner, that work underwater, so the ship doesn't have to go into dry docks. It's much more efficient for the, the ship owner. And it trims and collects that biological, potentially that biological pollution, which could be falling onto the seabed in a different port, for a different part of the world from where it was collected. And that's a really exciting thing to explain to young people. And I think when we're talking about engineering, it, it goes beyond the engine and what the jobs roles that are around designing, installation, build, maintenance and, and the use of that. But also to thinking about what's happening in, in ships that are in their lifespan 
and were designed to run on a diesel engine, but perhaps are going to be part of this hydrogen transition. Um, so it's a really interesting place to be. We've said that the, the sector is expected to double in size by 2030, so there's really never been a better time. I was in a meeting this afternoon when we were talking about the shipbuilding strategy, and, and the government has firmly put itself behind that. It, it was attached to Royal Navy vessels, but it's, it's not actually limited to Royal Navy vessels. It is about um, reinvigorating the shipbuilding industry in the UK. And there's a huge amount of work going on there. And one thing's for sure, we're going to need engineers to support that work. Another, um, another branch of engineering, if you like, is the work that goes in around supporting wind for wind power generation and uh, a colleague at Hull University told me recently that in order to meet the government targets for wind power generation over um, the next 10 years we are 12,000 engineers short. That industry is desperate to recruit engineers and whilst it's a it's a maritime based career it's obviously within the power generation um, sector but the the technicians that install the um the wind turbines maintain them service them repair them and so on tend to go out on on boats in small crews and they're away three weeks on three weeks off um out at sea and some of the the wind farms one of them in particular is 70 miles from the coast so it's not something that um, you sort of pop out to uh, nine till five. Um, so that's another aspect of the maritime sector, being involved in that sort of science and green revolution, but a really interesting engineering um, career to consider. Next slide, please. So we've talked about a funded career, cadetships, apprenticeships, employers that are prepared to invest in people's training. It's a great sector for young people to be coming into to build a lifelong career, but with lots of opportunities. And we talk about roles at sea, onshore, chance to see the world and wide varying pathways and entry routes. Next one, please, Rachel. So how can we help you? Well, the Maritime UK website has a careers area of the website. And within that, you will find all sorts of information that will help you to support the young people in your life as they're making choices about their career um, aims and ambitions. So there are longer videos, which are about 20 minutes each, and look at some of the industries that, um, that Maritime includes. So we have got one that's on careers at sea, for example. We've got another one that looks at the work of a port, and it's exploring Portsmouth International Port, and it's a super video, because they start off by looking at the port and breaking down the business functions, and within the business functions, starting to talk about the different jobs that are there. But, you know, Portsmouth International Port employs three and a half thousand people. It's a large employer and the opportunities are endless. We've also got virtual tours of maritime sites and vessels. So that's, that's an interesting thing to have a look at. My personal favourite is um, a Royal Navy ice um, patrol ship that, that goes down to the Antarctic. And you can have a, it takes about six or seven minutes long, this video, but they take you right around inside the vessel, which is fantastic. We've also got a number of interviews, which I uploaded to the website only last week, actually, with apprentices, talking about the different apprenticeships that they've managed to gain. And um, some are in, in engineering, others in other roles within the sector. And we, we also managed to track down a number of employers who are now senior post holders, but who started their career off as, as an apprentice. They're only little short videos. They're three or four, maybe maximum five minutes long each, but it just helps you understand what that person's career journey was and how they feel about it. There's also longer careers videos. There's three on there. There's a link on this slide, which you'll have access to, uh, to the one that we created for the Solent. But there's one that we've done in Liverpool and there's one that we've done in the Southwest. And over the three videos, they pick up six different job roles. So you get to meet apprentices or young people that are starting out in their careers in maritime. These are all shore based roles. Um, 
But when I say shore based, one of the one of the ones in the in the Solent actually works for Serco and he works on uh, tugs and workboats, uh, moving the Royal Navy um, ships in and out of harbour safely. So he is on the water. He's not out at sea, if you see what I mean, that would be the distinction. So there's lots of resources there, lots of videos to watch, information to read and things to research. Um, next one, please, Rachel. So we include this slide normally when we're delivering it to young people, but I appreciate the audience this evening is, um, is mostly parents. But there are job titles that you might never have heard of. There's also going to be job titles that haven't even been created yet for children that are being born now because the sector is going through such a massive period of change. Um, can we go on to the next one, please? As I said, the um, I've got a, I've got definitions there for the different jobs, but one of the ones that really interests me is the ship cybersecurity, and I didn't even know that was a thing. So if there's a young person in your life that's really interested in computers and everything around uh, computer tech, um, cybersecurity we know about, but this is to do with autonomous vessels, and it's a bit James Bond really. If you've got an autonomous vessel, so you've got a robotic vessel essentially, um, that is being controlled remotely and there's no human beings on the boat. You don't need pirates to come aboard the, the boat or the ship and to overpower the, the crew. You just need someone to be able to hack into the computer system and then they can direct the ship or the boat to wherever they, whichever harbour um, or marina they want it to go to in, in the world. So this is a whole new industry that is building and it's on the back of the development of autonomous vessels. But that's just one example. Can you move on to the next one, please? So I'm leading that career. I would hope that careers program, I would hope that you find some of that information useful. Um, I'd invite you to just put Maritime UK into Google and you'll, you, there's a link to the careers pages from the homepage, so you'll be able to find us. Um, if anyone's got any specific questions, Rachel or the others will be able to pass it on to me after this session, but um, I hope that was useful and that's my contact details, keep in touch. That's everything from me. Great, thanks Lorna. Um, so like we said, we've got um, we've got those contact details there and uh, if you've got any questions that uh, we're not able to answer at the end of this webinar, we can pass them on and make sure that they get to Lorna so you can answer. But um, like Lorna said, all of the information is on the Maritime UK website and it's worth noting that during um, uh, uh, National Apprenticeship Week, which was last week, I think, Lorna, wasn't it? And um, there's a whole stream of um, information on social media as well. So it's worth checking that and keeping an eye out as well for National Careers Week, which is coming up in the first week of March, where we'll have more information about careers at sea, as well as some information from Maritime Careers. So worth checking this out on social media as well. Um, for now, we're going to go back to um, engineering on board ship and uh, get a little bit more insight, uh, particularly from our ambassadors as they're here and they have definitely got the expert knowledge. So um, what we've got here is a ship comparisons um, page. So I'm just going to whiz through these. Um, so we talked about the types of vessels that people can work on um, if they choose to take a career on board ship. And uh, this is just to give you a bit of uh, insight into the scale of some of the ships that people can work on. And it's interesting that Lorna talked a little bit about people who might want to work on board ship and those who want to go ashore. Um, there'll be some people um, who want to spend their um, whole working lives on board ship. And we've got some careers at sea ambassadors who've done that. I can see Chris is nodding. He's uh, possibly one of those people who wants to do that. But we've also got um, Stephen as an example of someone who worked on board ship and now works ashore. So what we're um, able to say is that um, um, a kind of merchant navy careers and careers on board ship is a, a good pathway into the maritime industry looking at other careers that um, you might want to go in, um, around so whether it's staying on board ship like Chris or coming ashore like Stephen there's uh, options for people to um, to kind of make the career their own if that makes sense so what I'm going to do now is ask for our ambassadors to just give a quick overview of the types of vessels they've worked on and uh, what that was like if there are any differences um, just for a bit of an insight, because I think ship types and um, and uh, that will be something that people might want to consider when they're thinking about um, where to go for uh, starting a career at sea. So can I start with Stephen, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, when I did my cadetship, I was on um, cable laying vessels, so dynamic positioning vessels. So these ships go um, 
they are stationed around the world. So there's a lot of subsea cables that people probably maybe don't know about. There's subsea cables all over the world, uh, telecoms, power, and there's ships that have to lay those cables and there's ships that have to maintain those cables. So if there's a typhoon or a heavy weather anywhere, that can actually have an effect to the cables underwater. So the ship I was on would go out and we would uh, we had uh, remotely operated vehicles, we had sonars, and we would actually uh, repair these cables, um, whether that was bringing it up onto deck using anchors and uh, grappling hooks or whether it was doing uh, work with the remotely operated vehicle. So um, that was one ship I was on. So that was my during my cadet ship. There was maybe uh, 25 to 30 people on board. It was a great crew. We got lots of time ashore. There was no cables to repair. We were usually uh, in a port and doing some maintenance during the day and getting the opportunity at the weekends, maybe the evenings to uh, explore wherever we were. And then I moved on to cruise ships. So I worked for Disney Cruise Lines um, and ended up on the Disney Magic which was a totally different experience, um, almost 900 crew, and then a couple of thousand passengers. So a totally different uh, way of life on board. Um, a lot more engineers compared to what I was used to uh, on the cable layers. There was maybe 10 of us on the cruise ship. But I'm not even sure there was maybe 40, 50 of us. There was uh, a huge raft of engineers, fitters, carpenters, plumbers, um, mechanical, hotel and entertainment engineers. It was a uh, yeah, a real variety. But the beauty of going from different ship types was you really got to see the different types of systems on different ships and what turns into a priority. On the cable layer, the priority was uh, positioning and propulsion. On the cruise ship, it was keeping the, punk, the, the passengers happy. So it was making sure all the services worked, you know, sewage systems, fresh water, uh, entertainment systems, lighting, you know, those things were essential. If the engines stop when we get delayed, we can deal with that but if the lights go off the passengers get very upset so there's there's a lot um, of different tasks that maybe you don't think of and like Lorna said when you think of engineers sometimes you really don't need to think about engines you need to think about all of the other systems that contribute to a ship which is uh, yeah very vast. Great thanks Stephen and um, same question to you Chris what kind of vessels have you worked on and what have the experience has been uh, for you? Okay. Um, well, I started off on cruise ships, as I mentioned before. Um, so I started with Princess Cruises. Um, Travelled to Sydney on my first um, ship posting, which was uh, an experience in itself when I was 18. Um, I joined the Dawn Princess, which was a relatively small cruise ship, um, you could consider now. Um, there was about, I think it was 1,200 crew. So um, still quite a lot, with about 3,500 passengers. So as a cadet, I'd never been in an engine room before. I'd been on boats, but never in the engine room. Uh, so I didn't really know what to expect. So I went through all the different tasks that I had to, to, to do while I was on there, which was for about four, uh, four months. I made a lot of friends, saw a lot of the world. Um, but ultimately I learned how to be a watchkeeper um, or was learning to be a watchkeeper. Um, so I've mentioned that before, watchkeeping, as, as Stephen said as well, there's so many different um, systems on board and, and essentially we want to get from one place to another and keep the lights on as well which is always good um, so as a watch keeper uh, we basically were in charge of not only starting and stopping the engines we were maintaining all of the other systems around that support the engines uh, and, and they're running so I learned how to do that again along with the other systems uh, around the vessel such as galleys etc and, and life-saving equipment so I spent about five years on the cruise ships um, before moving to the passenger ferries. I currently work on the English Channel uh, for DFDS Seaways um, and I joined there as a fourth engineer and then worked my way up through through the ranks and to where I am now. Uh, completely different ship uh, with the road packs ferries so we take a lot of cargo uh, and passengers as well through the summer. Um, as an engineer it's much more interesting I have to say because um, it's, it's non-stop it's 24-7, it's, it's a lot shorter trip, so we do two weeks on, two weeks off, um, but it's basically, we are, we don't stop, we, the only time we stop is in port for 45 minutes, other than that, we, we're continuously running. Um, so as you can imagine, there's a lot less crew. Um, in the cruise ships, it's about 100 roughly in the technical department. In the, on the ferries, it's roughly about 30. Um, you can imagine, obviously, the same or similar amount of tasks that we've got to complete, with a third of the crew. 
Um, so that does make things a little bit more challenging. And then the higher up the ranks you go, there's a lot more responsibility, um, obviously with the less people as well. So um, very rewarding, both of them uh, in different ways. I would say cruise ships is more in terms of systems and it's been great for me to learn the systems as a cadet. But personally, now in the position I'm in, um, the ferries are much more enjoyable as an engineer because it's much more hands-on as well. Um, so I've got to experience, um, you know, fully stripping down engines um, or any, whether it's a, you know, one minute I could be working in the galley, next minute I'm changing a cylinder head on an engine or working on a winch on deck in the snow, like last week. Um, so it, it's, it's very different, but really rewarding and every day is different. Amazing, Chris. And the reason that we um, chose to go over that is because um, Lots of people will ask about um, how to make decisions about um, which sponsoring company to go with or which company to go with, for example. And uh, what we say is to have a look at the different offers that people have in terms of the types of vessels, in terms of the kind of experiences that you want to get. Because um, one of the, the great things about the cadetships is you do get a fully sponsored um, course. So your training is covered both at college and on board ship. So Chris was talking a little bit about his experience as a cadet on board ship but there would also have been some uh, time studying at college as well and we'll talk a little bit about that later but it's worth um, taking some time to explore uh, what kind of things you might be interested in so it could be that passenger vessels you want to go and it could be that you want a different kind of experience it could be that you don't really know what experience you want and therefore you might want to go for a company that offers a few different types of experiences on different vessels but it's definitely worth encouraging um, the uh, cadets or anybody, anybody who think uh, is interested in it to have a look at sponsoring companies is one of the, the things that we we hear a lot a particular question we get a lot with um with careers at sea so just to give you a bit of an insight into that um also i was talking last time on the webinar and these uh, kindly came from stephen about introducing the engine room because we were trying to um explain what it's like in an engine room and actually i think the size comparisons are something that took me about particularly. Um, so Stephen, do you want to just give a few um, updated facts on what you said to me about the ship sizes and engine sizes? Yeah, so I mean, in the last uh, webinar we did, we sort of talked a bit about um, the size comparisons. So, I mean, when you think about a, a car engine, so the top left picture, uh, looking with the person's hand, that would be maybe a, a small piston from a, a small car engine. And then you look to the left hand side, that would be for a, a maybe a medium size diesel electric. Um, it's not enormous. That's probably a small diesel engine for a ship. Uh, they get a lot, a lot bigger, such as the the middle picture there, which is probably a slow speed two stroke engine. Um, you know, they're huge. You can get inside these engines when you compare this to a car engine or you know a lifeboat engine or something like that. These engines you can you can get inside. You can do a lot of work on them, but at the same time. You will have to, if as an engineer or electrician at sea, you'll also be in the lifeboats and you will be working on lifeboat engines, which are, you know, small engines and require a lot more finesse. Maybe, I mean, the big engines need finesse as well, but yeah, the, the size comparisons is, is quite significant. And in particular, the, the picture at the bottom is the engine control room on the Disney Magic cruise ship. So if you're interested in, um, or if your, your children are interested in, you know, computer systems, I mean, just have a look at how many screens are in there. On the backboard there, there's also um, a mimic of all of the valves on board the ship. All of these are automated, so there's electrical systems that are feeding to all of these screens. The, the watchkeeper, there'll be one watchkeeper in that control room, keeping an eye on all the systems, and that's his responsibility for his four or six hour shift, is to make sure that you know all of these systems are operating and using all of the tools he has or she has to, uh, to make sure it's, um, the system's good. And as Chris said, keeping the watch safe and making sure during your time on board you're uh, you're efficient. So yeah, just a bit of a size comparison of what you would maybe expect on a ship. Great, thanks, Stephen. Uh, so yeah, just a, a little bit of an insight there, just for for interest. Um, so. Um, we're going to go quickly over now in the last few minutes just about some more specifics about studying and all of this information again can be found on the careers at sea website it's just to kind of give you an insight 
And so we talked about um, the training that you get, you get some where you get some training on board ship, um, but there'll be some college study as well. So um, it's set out into phases, which are sort of like terms um, at a school. So you'll have the first phase, which is completely um, in colleges to kind of give you all the essential knowledge you need, the um, basic training courses that you need to be able to work on board ship initially, as well as all the technical um, uh, things that you need to know and for engineering that will um, might include some uh, workshop skills um, but it will also include um, quite a lot of maths and I think that's the uh, one thing that I think again I've heard from people who um, have studied that maths is a, a key skill to have particularly in engineering so um, definitely if you can make sure that you uh, brush up on um, those kind of skills in school but here's a map of the um, nautical colleges that are around the UK so you could be based at any of these uh, colleges um, and I would normally go and um, ask the ambassadors to talk about where they study, but we're quite short of time. But um, you can see that there's a, a wide range of different places you can study for your um, for your training, whether that is a cadetship or whether that is rating training. So going down an apprenticeship route. And um, so it's worth having a look at these colleges. And again, um, on our careers at Sea website, we have an events page and that's where you can find some nautical college open days. And it's well worth having a look at those as well, because if you go to there, then you can speak to lecturers, you can speak to cadets who are currently studying, you can have a look around uh, virtually at the moment at the facilities they've got, uh, particularly the simulators that they've got uh, are really quite impressive. So it's worth again having a look at those um, just to get a bit more of an insight into the training and again further insight from people who are part of um, uh, working with uh, cadets in the college and uh, you'll also get to speak to some sponsoring companies as well. So worth checking those out. Uh, but once you've got your first um, phase uh, completed, you'll then go and work on board ship. And the idea is that we have a kind of sandwich course um, in the UK. So you start doing your college study, then you take your um, understanding and knowledge you've built up from college and then take a practical approach on board ship. And then you go back to college again and you get the kind of almost like the next level of understanding. And then you go and apply that again. So you build on your knowledge as you work through the cadetship. And um, by the end of it, you'll get your... Um, for a cadetship you get your officer of the watch ticket and uh, I think we've got that coming up now so um, yes here we go so for the officers um, you will have your professional seafaring certificate which is the officer of the watch ticket um, but in order to get onto the officer route you need to have GCSEs or standard grades or A-levels or highers in Scotland and this will depend on which course you're going into so there's a HNC, HND offer Scottish professional diploma or a foundation degree. Um, and again, for each specific route, there are details, uh, general details on the Careers at Sea website about what qualifications you'll need, but they will vary between companies. So it's worth having a look specifically at which um, companies you're interested in going for and um, having it that way. But um, there'll be a range of different courses depending on um, your entry levels and your study style as well. So it's worth having a look. At that and uh, there's also the same for the ratings so um, if you want to go and do GSSC or standard grades and go into apprenticeship qualification you can do that and you'll do your basic seafarer safety training sessions which will give you your ratings seafarer certificate. Um, so I think uh, we're getting close to the Q&A time so I'm keen to make sure that you get a chance to ask any questions so do keep those kind of maybe our host can start sending those through just so we can have a look. Um, but while we um, wait, what I might um, ask the ambassadors to jump in and do is to um, first speak about the which course they did, um, just to say like what level they did. I, I think it will go back to the officers routes. I think uh, both of you did an officers route, is that correct? I think. Um, so they can talk about what um, they did and also just um, any kind of last minute uh, hints or um, uh, what, what am I looking for? Um, Words of advice to anybody who might be interested in uh, applying what kind of things to consider. So if we start with Stephen and then um, we'll see if any questions come in. Uh, yeah, no worries. Yes. So um, I did a foundation degree. So I had my GCSEs. I actually um, took a role uh, as an electrician before I started at sea. So I did my electrical apprenticeship shoreside first and then decided I wanted to go to sea. So when I um, applied for the Merchant Navy through um, a training company, uh, they put me through the foundation degree course for electrotechnical engineering. And that was at South Tyneside College. Um, it was great. There's like you say, a lot of maths to be, to be done, um, a lot of studying. It's not like a normal university uh, 
course um you're there every day when you're at uni you're at college you're it's monday to friday nine to five almost um but you know you do get your downtimes the evenings you make a lot of friends it's everybody's there in the same position most people have never set foot on a ship before so those first sort of few months in the college is a great time to make friends and then when you come back from your uh first trip to sea you find that everybody's on different ships and everyone has their own stories everyone had different experiences cruise ships tankers and it's really fascinating after that first sea phase you maybe get a grip of uh, perhaps you want to change direction or you want to you know look at cruise ships rather than tankers or ferries rather than cruise ships you know you, that's when you start talking you meet these people that you you end up being friends with for life um out of the people you're with at college and the people you meet at sea um yeah the one biggest insight i would have for anyone working at sea is to speak to everyone who's on board some of the people on board have huge amounts of experience um and everybody at sea loves telling stories i don't think i've met any seafarer that doesn't like telling a story about their cadet ship or where they've been or what ships they've been or what they fixed and you know that's where you get a lot of insight from these people as well they're really everyone is helpful um you know you just have to ask the right questions sometimes but everyone's there to help each other out and get through the watch and get back home safely and enjoy your well well and leave great thanks Stephen. and uh, same question to you chris what course did you do to start off with and any kind of last minute advice that you say last minute any additional advice you give to someone who um is considering starting a career at sea yeah okay so i did the foundation degree as well um initially i wasn't actually planning to join the merchant navy i didn't actually know anything about it uh, so I was in a similar position to those um, looking at this this now. Um, basically, I joined the Royal Navy and uh, halfway through found out about the Merchant Navy and, and decided to go down that route instead. Um, so I did A-levels uh, in Maths, Physics and Electronics. And then I went to Warsash Maritime Academy uh, near Southampton. And I did my foundation degree. So I got my sponsoring companies. I actually applied to three companies um, and I got the job with all three. But I, I held out until I got the, uh, the job with Carnival because um, I wanted to go on the cruise ships. And then basically I've written down a couple of the subjects. It was 13 years ago, so I'm trying to remember. But it's basically, it was heavily based on maths, as we've said. So it's maths, physics, thermodynamics, uh, engineering, drawing, engineering principles. And then there was a heavy um, uh, workshop experience as well. So where you basically, you'll learn how to, um, how to use a lot of the machinery, whether it be lathes, welding, um, bench fitting, and depending which college you go to, they've got different facilities there as well. Um, so it's really good. But throughout the, the three years that you spend in the, the maritime institution, you, you pick up all of the, the necessary um, requirements that you, you'll, you'll need and um, will be required of you when you go back to sea. Um, so as Rachel's already said, it's split. So you do, there's five phases. Um, so one, three and five are all in college and then two and four are at sea. Um, and so it's all split up quite nicely. And then, as you said, you can share um, your experiences with, with others that you've, you know, are on different types of vessel. Uh, if, if I was going to give any advice, I would say uh, study hard. <laughs> Basically, you need to, what you can get when you do your um, when you do your study. And if you get over a certain percentage, you get what's called exemptions. Uh, when it comes to do your chief engineer's certificate later on, um, if you've got over a certain percentage, I think is 65%, uh, you don't have to do those subjects again. So it makes it a lot shorter when you're trying to get your chief engineer certificate uh, and second. So study hard, but play hard. That's what I'd say. That's great advice, I think, there. Um, so I don't think we've got any questions unless there's any that have come up. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can find this slide. Yes, yeah, so here we go. So we've got skills and uh, attributes. And I know that you guys through um, Sea Cadets um, encourage a lot of these kind of uh, skills and attributes in the uh, different things that you do within your unit. So things like um, teamwork and communication and leadership. I know that you guys do look at problem solving. Um, you guys are already in units, so the kind of um, the the social um, uh, aspect and the communication as well is uh, is really key. So um, it's just great to see that some of the skills that are needed for working in the Merchant Navy can uh, that you would build up in uh, Sea Cadets as part of the stuff you do is is something that you can. Um, carry over so um it's it's great that um, a lot of people who are in the uh, the secrets would already have a lot of the skills that some sponsored companies and uh 
uh, people who uh, are looking for um, merchant navy seafarers, they already have them there, which is great. So it's great to have those kind of in your back pocket to kind of uh, bring out. Um, and I, I know that there is a few um, sea cadet volunteers, um, uh, sea cadet volunteers, and um, careers at sea ambassadors who came through the sea cadets as well. And they have said that some of the experiences they had within their units have been really helpful. So um, keep encouraging your sea cadets to pick up these skills because they're, they're great things to kind of carry on into whatever career they go into, potentially in the Merchant Navy, who knows? So um, we've got all the information here. Um, as we haven't got any questions, I am happy to leave it there. But um, like we said, um, if you head over to the careers at sea website, you'll find all this information um, uh, at your fingertips, so everything from uh, the sponsoring companies list, the list of colleges, list of college open days, and how you can get in touch with us about organising uh, a visit, particularly uh, potentially to uh, your unit with um, some lovely secret uh, secret volunteers, lovely careers at sea ambassadors like Stephen and Chris here. I think um, you'll agree with me. We're saying that they're um, a, a valuable asset to careers at sea, and we really enjoy hearing their experiences. And it's it's great to hear from people who have been there, done that, about what it's like to work and train as a, a Merchant Navy seafarer. So um, if there are any other questions, like I said, happy to leave it there. Um, so I might hand back over to our host just to finish off and um, uh, finish off the webinar. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so yeah, that hopefully was very informative for everybody. Uh, we haven't had any questions come in. So I guess from that, it was a very comprehensive presentation. Um, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to Rachel for sort of co-hosting, well, taking the lead actually on this presentation and to Stephen and Chris uh, as well as, um, oh, I forgot her name now, Lorna, wasn't it? Uh, so thank you very much, guys. Just to let you know, this webinar will be recorded and put up onto the training and admin website. So if there's anybody who you think would benefit from seeing it again, then you can pop in there and uh, show them. It should go up in the next few days. So thanks for coming. Thank you again, everybody. Uh, very well done presentation. I enjoyed it, learned a lot. Uh, and hopefully some of our cadets will follow in your footsteps. Thank you. Goodbye.